And you can see here that as I've tapped it down, because I, because I couldn't get my foot on it, it's actually sort of swung out of shape. And not being able to get the hammer on it doesn't help really. To somewhere like near where it's going to be in line. That's not bad. I'm going to tighten the clamp up. That's good. Now from here forward we're dealing with half ribs if you like because we've got the the stem deadwood in place. Our next rib is going to butt up against it down at the bottom there. Most of the ribs that we've got cut are just over the eight foot, which is sufficient to go completely side to side. So it's a waste to put an eight foot rib in there. So what we'll do, we'll leave those until later on. And if we break any, we can use half of them in there. Or when we get to the end, we can pull one out, cut half of it off, bend that in, leaving the other half in the pipe for somewhere else. So we'll now move start moving back through the boat, putting long ribs right across. Here again, because we've got a centre plate case and a centre plate slot, we can use half ribs here if we need to. It just depends how it all goes. We had, I think we had ten in the steam pipe. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got four more to go. That will get us back to just after the middle mould. Which should be good. Now we're coming back into the middle of the boat. There's very little edge set or edge bend required on these ribs. Just a, a little bit of twisting as they lie in, really. We just want to make sure that they reach both sides. Pushing down on the rib, pushing out, foot on the keel again to hold that in place. Yep, that's good. So keeping weight on the keel, pushing down on the other side. Getting the rib as lined up as we can. Okay. That's good. So foot on the keel, pressure out in the bilge, tap down, tighten. The other good reason for having the batten round is that obviously we aren't putting clamp marks on the top plank but also the oak is going to get really badly stained where the clamps are because the tannin in the oak reacts with steel and goes black or dark purple and you can see just a few black spots and black marks and, and slightly purple stains on the ribs just through the steaming process down here especially so doing it like this, it gives us a chance to take the rib out, give it a good going over with a bit of sandpaper and hopefully get rid of most of that staining. Because the inside of the boat is going to be varnished, we want everything to look as good as it can. And where the ribs are stained by the clamps up here, all that of course is going to be cut off and thrown away. So that's, uh, that works well in, on every angle really. That's the first breakage of the day. You see there was a, a knot there. 
that's not a great problem. We've already got that side in place, pretty much, so we'll clamp that there for a minute. And what we can do I'll just try and saw through that one there. So we just get an old off cutter planking which we can stick in the slot. That now gives us something to push down against. So I can stand on the bottom there. Push that rib out, clamp it in place. And that also gives us something solid now for when we put half a one in that side to push against. Now we've got a section of rib there with a bit of a curve on it. We could just try giving it a bit of Going, going cooler all the time. It broke because of a knot, a big knot in the rib. So the grain shouldn't be too bad if that knot section is kept up. So giving it a bit of edge bend there. A bit of bend that way. It's still not quite. bending it to get it to lie flat on the plank and this end is actually going a bit stiff now. Oh and I've just broken it again. Trying to, try to bend it edgeways is obviously um, much more difficult for the oak than bending it the other way and that's just a grain failure there. So not to worry, we're doing all right. This one's got a bit of a knot in it as well, and I think just by testing that, I'm going to be able to break it. But what it does mean is we can do the other half here. Our little planking off cut down there. So those two are in solidly. You can spend your life sorting through all the ribs before they go in the pipe and marking out this one's going there and that one's going there. But at the end of the day, I find it better just to cut all the ribs. If you've got a few with obvious faults, then yeah, sure. Just think, oh, well, that one's only going to do half. just then sort of deal with what you've got and if you start with the long ones get them done because we're going to be timbering two boats this week we've got a load of ribs there to put in and so far touch wood um, breakages have been fairly minimal one we're clamping close to this mould because when the mould comes out there'll be a rib to go in there. Now I'm just over bending this slightly, pushing down in the turn of the bilge and pushing down with my right hand but also pulling it towards me just to get it to lie flat on the, on the planks. The planks do have a very slight tumble home and so if you don't push the rib out to that, um, it can end up being straight. And if you end up with six straight ribs, it's going to pull the planking in and you're not going to get the, the shape that it actually have been. 
be able to bike to. Well, we'll put another sort of 10, 10 ribs into the pipe and we'll top up the steamers. Another 10 ribs should take us back to behind the after mould. Um, a couple of them are bound to break, so we've got a, we'll have a few short ends. And then finally we'll uh, steam whatever we need for the rest. So another... Six. I don't know if you can see in the steam pipe there, but I've got a little, um, just to cause confusion, I've got a little batten that's raised up from the bottom of the pipe just to keep the ribs up off the bottom of the pipe so that they're in the steam all the way. thing is not to have too much of an angle on your pipe so that they don't all slide down and you have to stick your arm in up to your elbow to drag them out. That's not very uh, <coughs> very sensible. But it does help if you've got a cold just to stick your head over the pipe for half an hour. And stick those in there, leave the ends Gettable, cover it with a rag, keep some of the steam in. That's it. We just check the steamers. These little timbers here going in the boat, then they're, they're bending in quite easily. And the whole process relies on the cells of the wood stretching on the back of the rib and squashing a bit on the front and once the cells and things get to the point of no return is when the rib breaks. But on larger ribs, um, on larger ribs sometimes um, when they're going in they're under quite a lot of strain and, and pushing and shoving. And what you can do is to get something like an old bandsaw blade, a broken bandsaw blade, clamped to the back of the rib, and then bend the whole lot into place. And having that steel strapping on the back of the rib helps prevent the back stretch. So it forces the inside of the rib to squash more, and hopefully the rib is never going to break through being squashed, it's only going to break through being stretched. So you're limiting the stretch, which limits the break, hopefully. <laughs>